Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about what we got uh, this past week at Ted's house. Ted is basically a dealer that comes to the Grapevine show once in a while, and uh, he's just a really good person, uh, likes to keep it honest and true, and is really fair with us. And so we're just trying to build up those local connections like we talk about all the time. But right now, we're in Chicago, and we're buying some cool stuff. Got some stuff today. I uh, can't wait to film and talk to you guys about this, but let's sit down with Christian from Treasure Town and let's talk a little bit about these coins, why we bought them, and what's really neat about each one of them. But I hope you guys enjoy this. Make sure you guys leave a like, and uh, I will see you in the video. Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and I'm really excited about this video. I'm here with Drew from Akusha Collectibles down in Dallas, Texas. Normally they're from the Houston area. They drove over um, and bought a bunch of coins today from a local dealer up here. So how much did you spend, Drew? By the way, thanks for being here, but what did you spend? And this isn't everything. Yeah, happy to be here. This is a small portion of what we bought. I only spent about $13,000 with a, a local dealer named Ted. Really great guy. So, yeah, going to be fun to go through some of the highlights. And I guess on an overarching perspective, you know, what was your mentality with this buy? Are these coins that, you know, you already, you know, are, are looking to place in an auction or you're trying to just hold them for a long time in your own personal collection? Or, like, how did you approach buying this stuff? So a lot of these are for our retail customers, you know, people that spend around uh, $1,000 and under. And there's some that are a little bit over that. And those really work out with dealers. And so it's just dependent on, on coins, but mainly just selling them off the bat to the person that would pay the most. Cool. Well, I'm excited to go through them. And I think we'll start uh, on the left here with this Proof 66 Cameo. So for those of you who are newer, you know, that's going to be the contrast between, um, you know, the, the devices and the fields. But, you know, sort of much different, a little mirror in the back. Not that's necessarily mirror but there's significant contrast there. Uh, a three cent nickel coin. Um, you know, this looks pretty special. I mean, are you just looking with an eye to see, like, what are cool coins for somebody to buy retail who's like a, maybe anywhere from... A little bit more than beginner to you know advanced yeah so with most proofs you're really gonna want to uh, you know what I would say is that I'm looking for maybe a dealer that would like this or someone that's a three cent nickel collector and that's who you're gonna you know try to placate to and this one's a little bit more of a higher grade so you'd be talking to someone that you know is very avid about collecting these the cool thing about you know coins that are 66 67 68 is that there's not very many hairlines there's not very many distracting spots Cameo is very apparent on the coin. If there was any of those spots, I think Cameo might have been stripped from this coin. But there's a little bit of toning on the face and on the reverse um, on the bottom of the rim there. But other than that, the coin is, is very special, nice grade, and uh, I just think that it was a great pickup. Cool. And it says right there, you know, 840. What do you sort of anticipate selling this coin for? So about a year ago, I think this one sold for, um, I think, 860. And so getting this one under the, the, the most recent auction comp is great because, you know, we probably can make about $50, $60, $70 on the coin, but I think it's a fast mover. I think it's a beautiful coin, and that's, what we're, that's the goal of buying coins. You want to buy ones that are beautiful and things that can move quickly. Makes sense. Well, great um, perspective there. I think these ones were some, uh, you know, I just want to cover early in the video because I thought that they were beautiful. Um, you know, Mint State 65 with the full head that's going to, um, again, for the beginners, we're looking at Liberty's head. I believe it's like, you know, full cap and then clear eye and ear hole. I'm, maybe that's off, but, uh, you know, these are like really sharp strikes. Uh, and then also Mint State 65. How do they compare to each other, and what was your mentality with these? So I ended up buying um, a few other coins from Ted at Grapevine, which is a, a local show near us in Dallas this past weekend. And so I messaged him because I really couldn't afford to pick up the rest, which were these two coins. And we ended up arranging a deal on these, which ultimately led to us going to his house and working with him. But the reason why I bought these coins is because they're very sought after, early date SOQs. Um, one's a 17 uh, S type 2 in 65 full head uh, just a little bit tougher of a coin to find and uh, this one's a little bit nice because it has some interesting toning to it a little bit of a pink and uh, tannish look to it also has a nice true view to boot and so I thought it was just a nice original coin I don't think it's been sent to CAC so a lot of things going for this one 
Um, and if we take a look at the second coin here, a 1920 SLQ, same grade. This one has a little bit more of a blast white appearance to it. Really nice original luster. And uh, you just really can't go wrong with great coins like this. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but I do think they're uh, really great coins to move and work with. Awesome. No, they definitely have that appeal. Now, you know, you talked about trying to move things quickly. How does sending things to CAC fit into that picture? You know, wh how do you think about locking up a pretty big, you know, $1,300, $2,200 coin um, and having it in the mail and, and sitting somewhere for, I don't know, two months? You know, what do you think? So I think there's a, a few variables that people have to consider. Um, one is sending it to CAC and having your capital tied up worth it. Uh, we sent an 1831 uh, Capust half and AU58 to CEC this past week, and uh, we bought the coin for around $650. And that's, uh, you know, the coin's not going to be on screen, but it's uh, something you guys can look up. Uh, we paid $650, and the coin sells for around $750. The cool thing about this coin is that it was very original. And so the last one that ended up selling, um, an AU58 CAC, sold for around $1,250. So having that, you weighing the odds of what someone will pay with a CAC sticker on it, really ends up allowing you to think about is it worth holding off for three weeks? And so that one was worth it, and there's a few others from the personal collection. Um, but these ones, I think, you know, we'll probably make 10%, maybe 15% on these, and they're going to be good to go. If we bought them a little bit better in terms of their price and we thought they could upgrade possibly, that's something that's also on the table. So a lot of things to consider when looking at one coin in specific. Cool, cool. No, thank you for that added bit. I think, uh, you know, you talked about some AU um, cap bus coins. This one's a small letters, 1832. Uh, half dollar really like how the toning looks there you know on the rim and i think the wear is like almost pleasing adds a little character to it but it looks like you paid 450 for it and what's the mentality here also in terms of you know why you know is au coin something that you feel like good eye appeal au resonates with your collecting base or we saw some very high grade staying liberty quarters or do you sort of have a mix of everything yeah, so um, it really just depends on the coin, but I think that offering an AU and then an MS type of variant in terms of your inventory is great because you can you can uh, work with people that want mint state coins or work with people that have a budget of $500 or less, like this one. This one's about the peak of retail for AU58, AU, AU55 small letters, but this one has really great originality and the rim toning really adds value to it. And so... That's something that you can work with when you're selling cat bust halves. If there's something that sticks out to you, like its originality or its color, like this one, you can add a premium to it. Cool. Um, no, that's great. And another one that jumped out at me, you know, we'd been talking about CAC a little bit earlier, you know, 1913D, PCGS Mint State 63 with what I think is just an extraordinarily clean uh, face and appearance for the grade. Um, obviously, CAC agreed 1300 bucks was the... You know, purchase price, or probably somewhere close to it. I'm not sure how it actually ended up working out. But is there a different approach with something like this? You know, would you ever crack it out and try to get it to upgrade? I think this one's great for the grade. There's a few scratches below the chin, which are very, very hard to pick up. I don't think you can pick them up, but they're right there. You can uh, see yeah. by that star. Bit. Yeah, yeah. And there also is some kind of striations that are going uh, horizontally across the face. And that was basically because someone put it in an album and it rubbed up against the kind of the inner workings of that album. And that's what took away from the grade primarily. The reason why we bought this coin is because it is CAC approved. And the thing about barbers and the thing about cap bust halves, um, we talked a little bit about earlier, but CAC approved coins with their originality end up going for 20%, 30%, 40% sometimes more in value because of their originality and how hard it is to find them CAC approved. And the reason why that is is because a lot of these coins were messed with. A lot of them were dipped out or they were cleaned or people tried to take a mark off the cheek or they were just treated like crap. Uh, and so getting a coin like this, Mint State 63 CAC approved, um, just it's an extraordinary coin. Really, really cool. No, thanks for sharing that added bit. I think in a, another thing, a little bit off the beaten path, we see a star grade here. So that's something unique to NGC. I heard maybe they have it copyrighted. I'm, I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, that's something that only they do. Is that just for the eye appeal? And maybe they don't want to call this, um, you know, proof like or cameo or something. But instead, uh, you know, they, it would be proof like. But they just give it a star? Or why do you yeah. think they did that? So the main reason why they did is because of the eye appeal of the coin. But the obverse really is a, is a proof-like, in my opinion. But if you take a look at the reverse one more time, 
it doesn't have that proof-like appeal to it. So most of the time when they honor or give out um, a star designation, it's going to have that proof-like appeal on either one side or the other. And another reason why they would give a star out is because of maybe a really nice color on the coin that's very vibrant. That's something that you also see at NGC. Okay, great. That's fun and, and again, different strokes for different folks in terms of varying the inventory. You see a uh, older copper coin, 1834 half cent. I think it's the only non-silver one in today's video. Or that's not true. There's the, um, but only non-gray colored coin. Um, really nice eye appeal, I think, in terms of just like great lustrous appeal. Um, yeah. So, could you give us a little more on it? Yeah. So we don't really mess with copper too often, but when we saw this one at Ted's table at Grapevine, we thought it was really nice. Had some still nice remaining reds on the coin. You want um, you know, so there's those three kind of designations they give. They give brown, red, brown, and red. And so this one was given a brown designation on its grading. But I think that with those re remaining reds in there, it really does give someone an added value to the coin. And so this one, having those reds and those browns in there, um, and it's just, I think it's just a stunning coin, very uh, issue-free, nothing that would make it um, bad. And so I love the coin. I hope it does well and something that we're experimenting on for sure. Very cool. Very cool. I think we got a few more here. Um, maybe I'll pick up with this, you know, mid state 61, a little bit of a lower grade, but I think, you know, pleasing different colors on the toning arrows, um, seated dime. And, you know, was this, the, was it the toning that attracted you to it or what's your strategy? Yeah. So I enjoyed the color of the coin, not too happy about like what the grade is on it, but I do see that many of these aren't uh, available for auction. And so, um, a great sweet spot to, to have is if you pay even sometimes strong or what auctions used to pay for before. So I think the last one that sold was for around 400 And so we paid $400 for this coin. But understanding that there's sections in time for auctions where people can get a coin for a good price rather than having this available all year round for, you know, maybe 400 or 450 440 something like that. But what drew me to this coin is the arrows. It's just a harder thing to find and the color of the coin. Cool. And for those of you, I want to say that this is right. If you know better, correct me. But the arrows, there would be some very minute changes in the silver weight or the weight of the coin. So they would indicate for a few years that this was different from the recently released ones with the arrows. And sort of a little fun fact about numismatic or, you know, U.S. numismatics, how we would, uh, when we cared about the silver or, um, you know, just precious metal content of the coin. Um, so we've got a few coins left. I think all exciting stuff, but 1936S mid state 65 you know price slightly better date here um 575 was the price and it's blast white pretty coin yeah so most of the time when you're looking for great coins especially with tougher date walkers like this one you're going to want one that's blast white doesn't have any distracting spots um, or you're going to find one that's maybe beautifully toned something that gives a little bit of character but I think there's a lot in the middle between uh, those and they sometimes can look ugly or distracting. This one really is blast white, which drew me to the coin. And I do think it'll fit nicely in some, uh, you know, collector's short or uh, collector set. For sure. Um, after that, we got another barber. I always think that these are just sort of gorgeous in mint state. And I've never owned one until recently in mint state. But mint state 64, 15D quarter. Uh, it's got a, a neat sort of a, a luster pattern, I guess, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, is, is that common in terms of looks on Blast White? Or it's not really Blast White, but Mint State? Yeah, quarters? it's common on, on that kind of find. Uh, you could see that mainly on the quarters. Maybe it's just how they were struck and the reflectivity of the coin. So when the light hits it, it's almost like jagged edges. Um, and that's what small little jagged edges on the surfaces of the coin. So the way the coin kind of reflects with the light makes it a very interesting way that it was struck and that's just something that kind of pops out with barbers but uh, you know a nice 15d uh, barber quarter really enjoy the luster of the coin and uh, just don't see these too often had to buy it and really do like it nice well we got two Morgans um, some one really nice looking one that's a little more circulated we'll go with the PL coin you know Probably, you know, maybe what you had mentioned was that PL coins are tougher in certain dates. You know, is that factoring in here? Yeah, that's correct. So this one, um, New Orleans mints are a little bit tougher to find, especially with kind of a deeper, you know, proof-like eye appeal on the coin. And so this one, I bought for around $200, and I think that it's probably worth about $225, $230. But 
a lot of these a lot of the proof like collectors are hunting for proof like coins that are a little bit tougher of, of years to find and uh, this one kind of fit the mold it was an affordable piece and i think someone will enjoy it and when you buy a $200 coin, are you looking for a little bit more than 10% or do you think, you know, you'll sell it for 220 or you're going to try to do 240 or maybe you're looking for 201? Yeah, so it just really depends on the coin itself, but um, you know, if if we can find the right collector for it, I do think this one probably could be a $240 coin. Nice. Yeah, and that makes sense to have a little higher margins on the slightly lower dollar uh, items like this one which will be a little bit pricier, would think 18950 XF40. You know, looks uh, you know, looks XF40 to me, and you know, better date. Obviously, anything 1895 is going to be rare for the viewers out there. So, um, you know, I think the lowest grade of anything we've seen today it, was it just, you know, you feel like there's a lot of Morgan collectors that would be buyers on this type of stuff. Yeah, I think this one is reasonably graded and it's reasonable in terms of its price, and so I think this one, you know, a $650 coin isn't too bad. And I do think that it's a mid-tier type of coin. A lot of the 95Os we're going to see these days are AG3 or G4, and there's just something with less, you know, not very much detail. This one, like I said, a mid-grade, affordable, and is a little is a better date for the series. Someone will really like this coin. Great. Well, thanks so much. I mean, yeah, highlights of a thirteen thousand uh, dollar collection or, or you know coin buy, really not a collection, but a coin buy. And I think I'm sure a lot of the viewers will. Um, and, and people on your channel and people doing business with Akusha Collectibles are going to be excited about some of these new purchases to purchase for themselves. Yeah, I hope they enjoy this video.